name is Mary Jane DiPiero. Um, I have been with the school since the very beginning. Uh, I, my family moved out here from the Chicago area, and in, I had discovered before we came the Chicago Waldorf School. And my daughter was three when we moved here, and I thought it was really important. I, it was like the discovery. Many parents feel this. They walk into the Waldorf School and they see the beauty of it all and they begin to hear about it and they think, this is what I've been looking for. One thing I really liked that Steiner said was that schools should pay attention to the students that are in front of them, uh, the geographical location they're in, and the time, the time in history that they're part of. I think for me, the most challenging thing, and I think actually one of the most fundamental things about Waldorf education, is to get out of the intellect and into the imagination. And that requires an amazing expansiveness, um, spaciousness, and I think an adult who does that for him or herself um, is also creating that for the, for the children. And for me, that's one of the, the greatest gifts of Waldorf education. I think it's really a priceless gift that in a time that is so um, jangled, there's so, there's so many vibrations going on. If they're electromagnetic, all the technologies that we live with all the time. And to allow a time when the kindergartners can play uh, and, and, they can, and they can have this sense of time and space. And then the high school kids um, they get the same opportunity, but in a slightly different way because we go from imitation in the kindergarten to imagination in the lower grades to the intellect in the high school, never quite leaving behind the imagination and the intellect, but coming to a new level of intellectual ability, but still they do the arts. And all the arts are woven into their main lessons in, in physics and in chemistry. and. Uh, and, and they do biographies, and they're always considering the really important questions of humankind and the, the important questions for themselves. Uh, who am I? What am I doing here? Uh, how do I fit in this world? What am I supposed to do uh, with the things that I'm given? And just that continual striving for depth I think is, is one of the most exciting things about Waldorf education. We'd always say, well, Waldorf students, they know who they are. They have a, they have a center, they have roots. Um, and then I began to see it, uh, see how it really worked. And for me, um, the high school was really the, the epitome of that. Because uh, we'd always go to eighth grade and then send them out and we'd get reports back from, say, the Spanish teacher at the high, local high school who'd said, who is the student? Where did they come from? And you were always excited that, yes, it worked. But then, when we got our own high school, and I could see these students um, just growing and growing and, and, and uh, beginning to make all kinds of connections that were very exciting, I realized um, that it is, it is an education that I have uh, amazing confidences a confidence in and that really brings me amazing joy to see these students develop and go off and and do things in the world they're just they're just not afraid they're not afraid of doing art they're not afraid of movement they're not afraid of dance they're not afraid of the intellect uh, they know where their strengths are uh, and you know when we started the high school we were concerned where are they going to go to college uh, and it was something that needed to be proven and I, I continued to work at the high school through its first four years, um, through the first graduating class and then the second. And uh, it's just, it has not been an issue. It's pretty amazing that, you know, one student, one of our top students um, <clears throat> last year applied to dozens of colleges. And she went to an outside counselor and the counselor said, you can't get into these colleges. But there's some quality that even the college counselor didn't recognize. There's some quality of clarity and sureness and knowing and being able to write and put things together. She got into everything, everything that she applied to. I mean, and so then you begin to stop worrying about that. Not that, not that it's perfect, not that everybody gets what they want, but it's also that they want what suits them. They begin to understand where... There's, a, I think, truly an absence of this sense of we must go here because uh, 
it looks good or because our parents want us to. And the parents don't really have that either. There's, I mean, they go to good schools and top schools, but it's not because they're supposed to go there. It's because there's something that pulls them in that direction. How do you work with technology in a Waldorf school in an area that is the hotbed in the world of technology? And it's still something that we've worked in various ways to develop it, and we haven't quite gotten there yet. But one thing I think is that our students are children of the world, of their world, of this place. And so it's not as if they're techn technologically illiterate or backward at all. But I think the important thing is that they're not run by it. They get some respite. And yet, we recognize the importance of developing a really responsible technological curriculum so that they so that they really understand the depths of technology, they understand what they need to do with it, where it's going, how they can manage it rather than being a victim of it or letting it run them. So um, I, you know, from the very beginning, it's been important that to, to acknowledge that we were in Silicon Valley uh, and that we needed to respond to that. Um, and you know, you do it better sometimes in, you know, there are some, some, sometimes when the, the kids in junior high really get taken over with, with, with technology and it, then you, you write the course a little bit and bring speakers in and talk about the, the difficulties and the media, you know, that what you put on Facebook, Facebook is permanent and, um, and, and you know, it's, it, it, it can follow you all your life just, you know, to bring some balance to it. But, um, even if you look at the new publicity material that the school has, it takes into account that we're in a very particular place. And yet, being in what we used to call the belly of the beast uh, is, a, is a wonderful challenge, too. It, 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 has, it gives you a sense of relevancy that, uh, and, you know, that you're, 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 working, you're working in the real world, you're working in a, in a, at a cutting point, that, and you're bringing something that really is important. And then, you know, in this area, um, the Stanford, uh, Denise Pope at Stanford uh, with Challenge Success, we've worked with that, with that program quite a lot. And we go to it and they say, what are you doing here? You already do all this stuff. But um, I think that's been really important in this area to slow down the, the intensity of, of high-performing parents, high-performing students, people who are students who are, you know, just taken up with the idea that they must do 55 things and do it best. I think that's one thing that, uh, w that we've discovered. That's not even what colleges necessarily want anymore. They want thoughtful people who, who, can, who can look at things, compare things, move things around, work outside the box, so to speak, uh, um, you know, know who they are and what they're up to. There's a lot of behind the scenes work. Um, in making things really beautiful and warm and uh, living alive somehow. So that when, when people, whether they're strangers or whether they're old you know, families who have graduated and moved on, where they can come into a, 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 a vessel, a vessel that's been really consciously created, and a Waldorf classroom is that as well. So that um, it's there's a place there for the, the kind of warmth and aliveness to really happen. We're a private school. The tuition is high. We live in an area where all private school tuitions are really high. And at some point in the school, uh, about 10 years in, 15 years in, uh, we started a tuition adjustment program. And that program was a, get, uh, a promise to parents whose children were accepted that the school, we would we would make it financially possible for students to be here. And the, the way that program really came alive was, again, through conversation. The school would bring its budget, the parents would bring their budget, there would be that wrestling back and forth, and the genuine conversations about who these parents were. And for me, that's, that was cutting edge. The school has done things like that's one of the only Walder schools in the country to really make that tuition adjustment program work. And it's happened because of the, of the, the consciousness, the social consciousness of really having the in-depth conversations. 
the world of curriculum is a is a is a, I, I'm just always amazed at how how life giving it is and how um, it opens up people's minds so that they're you know by the time you're out of eighth grade you have all the world's mythologies and you have them you really do have them there you heard them as stories with your mouth gaping open you they've gone in you someplace and and you you know you might not remember all the details but you have them in your bones they do very sophisticated academic work and and if you you know, spend a little time in one of those classes, you can see it. And you can, but you can also see how they work it creatively. You know, in science, in every area, bringing in the great poets, bringing in the great thinkers, and how they've really penetrated. It's going deep. It's going deep, and not just, uh, and not just this, the, the superficial broadness that gets you through or gives you a good grade. And people come back. I mean, I saw a student today that I hadn't seen since sixth grade. I didn't even recognize her, but whew, what a great feeling that is to see this beautiful young woman knowing what she wants to do, and and you think, oh, I, you know, I, I knew, that, I knew that child, that continual growth and that resilience, and the flexibility that these students develop, is what the world needs. It really is. <laughs>